All right, and welcome back, heroes, to another edition of the Hero Shot Podcast, the only weekly live movie and TV talk show on the internet right now. My name is Duncan, and joining me all the way via the power and majesty that is the World Wide Web, Eric Bartolotta. Hi. Banana Pancakes himself, Eric Bartolotta. How are you, sir? What's up? Doing fine. You look, you look, well, you look great. Thank you. Just in a hoodie. Do I not sound great? I'm just, yeah, it sounds a little, I think I'm a little loud. Um, Should I, should I get closer? I don't know. We're going to have to, no, you sound, you sound okay, I guess. Oh, okay. Thanks. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I think, I think, I think it'll be all right. If you guys, uh, Kenny and Garrett, let me know how Eric sounds. If you guys can hear him, I got a complaint last week. That's why I was kind of worried about the audio this week. Who complained? Uh, not a complaint. They were just like, Oh, couldn't hear Eric. Could hear you just fine. Couldn't hear Eric. They stopped listening then. Yeah. Do what? They probably stopped listening then. Probably. Waste. And I can't say that I blame them. It was it was my mom actually. So I'll I'll record an entire episode just for her to make up for it. Well, she wasn't mad about it. She was just like, "No, it's okay." What's her favorite movies? I'll just do fake news stories. About um, her favorite, her favorite movie. movie is like, um, what's the one with J Lo where she's like a maid and she like marries the rich guy? Oh, uh, Made in Manhattan. That's one of her faves. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, so Something we're. Like we're going to do the uh, Made Shop podcast one, one week and surprise exactly, your mom. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Like I said, this is, you know, this is just a, a weekly show where we love to talk about everything in the world of movies and TV shows. Sometimes chicken tenders, sometimes pancakes, you know, sometimes iPhones. Like, you never Banana know. Bird. Yeah. Video games. Like, it can just, it can just be whatever, whatever you, whatever you fancy. Whatever um, you identify. And if you guys have seen the title and I guess been on the internet at all today, one, you probably saw naked pictures of Kendall Jenner. Did you see them? Oh, is that online? <laughs> yeah, those are online. Like today? Like today. Okay. All right, man. I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah I'm out. <laughs> but no, if you guys have been on the internet at all whatsoever today, you probably have heard the big news coming out of Warner Brothers in DC. I'm trying to get the stream pulled up on my phone, and it's like I've forgotten how to do it. Um, that, well, the, the news originally was that Henry Cavill would be out of the role as Superman for Warner Brothers in DC, and that things were going to be focused solely towards... Uh, like, you know, taking, you know, uh, uh, going towards, uh, Superman or I'm sorry, dropped my phone, Supergirl, excuse me. And, uh, you know, as the day has gone on, I'm not not so sure if I buy that, buy that complete story anymore, Eric, what say you? Um, I'm kind of sick of all this news, to be honest. Uh, like. I'm just kind of sick of like the Batfleck thing. Now it's turning into a Henry Cavill thing, which has kind of been a thing for a minute, but it just had, I had nothing, but to be real, be realistic here. He's about to be in, you know, in the Witcher is the lead role. That's probably going to be a big show for them. That's going to be the like game of Thrones style show. You think so? Yeah. I think that'll be like up there with like stranger things is like one of their like premiere shows, stranger things, orange is new black. I think Witcher is going to be like a big IP for them. Um, it's also one of their first, besides the Marvel shows, it's one of their first like existing IPs that they're adapting. So, um, hold on one second, Eric. Oh, they're saying, uh, apparently we are hold not getting second, sound Eric. from you. Saying, you can hear me though, right? I can hear you. All right. Then just say what I say. Um, I can hear you. No, I'm just kidding. Huh? What could be the issue? I don't know. Ashlyn says Eric has no sound, just saying. <laughs> no sound at all. Just saying. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think what could what could be the issue. Um, you want me to re-Skype into you? Or I guess that's not it because I, you can hear me. 
I can hear you, yeah. Um, now, why they can't hear you, I don't know. Because you're going into there. Oh, shoot. I know what it is. Okay. It's a charge. I know exactly what it is. Um, air, um, got it. I wish there was a way to, okay, everyone hold on two seconds. I know what the issue is. I'll be right back to fix it. Everyone just hold on one second. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. And I'm back. Eric. Should I, should I move back a little bit? Like a back, the top half of my head's missing in the frame. There we go. Done. Is that... Are we are we good now? I can't, dude. I freak I freaking forgot to plug up that cord. Kenny, I, are we good? Sorry, everyone. That was. Wow, they didn't hear me the entire time. No, they didn't hear you at all. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> I heard you, and in, in I mean, the like it recorded you, but the live stream was so not. Let's get everybody up. caught up. Huh? One, we're doing a, we're doing a Made Manhattan podcast for Duncan's mom <laughs> called Made Shot. Yeah. Uh, two, Kendall Jenner has some dudes out. Three, Superman may be, Henry Cavill may be out of Superman. How do I feel about it? I'm sick of all this news uh, with the DC stuff. Batfleck in or out, Cavill in or out. I don't think it matters until WB makes a statement, which they did today. It was still a little cryptic. It says they have not made a decision. Um, Henry Cavill, did you see he posted something on his Instagram? About I was going to tell you, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was going to ask you if you saw that. And let's... uh. Let's pull that up for everybody at home. Uh, don't, pull up, uh, don't pull up Kendall Jenner there, buddy. Oh, yeah. No, we're good. Uh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Henry Goulding? I don't follow Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. Uh, G? No, I do not. It's weird. It's um, it's like weird background music, and it's him like slowly holding up a Superman doll. Yeah. Let's see. Let's go over here. Let's uh But he has Krypton lifting team or something, sure not. Yeah. Oh, there you go. This always takes this always takes way too long than it ought to. And it's just because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I need to just come out there. Okay. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. But yeah, let's uh let's see what Henry Cavill posted after all of the news and all of the craziness that happened today. I don't know if anybody's seen this because, well, before the podcast, this has just been posted like half an hour before the podcast. But I just thought this was kind of interesting. I don't mean to blow everyone's ears out with that. Sorry. Do you hear that, Eric? Weird. That didn't really work out like I thought it was going to. Sorry, Eric. I can't hear you. Dude, yeah, it's still this whole thing is jacked up, man. I have to, I had to turn it because I have to turn you up so loud when I when I hear you. It was really loud in the video. Give me some give me some love, Eric. Hey. Blade Runner 2049 is a good movie. And you're back. Thank God. Uh but no, that was uh that's kind of, that was kind of strange. Okay. Okay. Well, no, I'm talking about the Henry Cavill thing on Instagram. Yeah, I can't get rid of this thing. God, I hate this thing so much, dude. What do you? It looks like you're like being possessed. It won't do. This thing won't go away, man. Exit. Press the red button. That's what I'm doing, bro. Anyways, I'm not doing that again. (laughs) Anyways, um. I, I got to say, after the um, 
after the initial quote, which for those who have not heard the quote, I'll get that pulled up. But um, I have it. I'm going to read it, or do you want to find it? Oh, no, go ahead. Okay, so uh, Henry Cavill's agent, who's actually helped The Rock with a bunch of uh, films and all that, um, be peaceful, the cape is still in his closet at WB Pictures has been and continues to be our partners as they evolve the DC Universe, anticipated WB's statement later today. Now, here's WB's statement, if you want to call it that. While no decisions have been made regarding any upcoming Superman films, we've always had a great respect for and a great relationship with Henry Cavill, and that remains unchanged. So he signed on for four movies. He's appeared in three, and he's got one more. And apparently there was uh, scheduling conflicts with Shazam, and he's got scheduling conflicts in the future with some other things, so they may get they may just get rid of them. Okay, okay, yeah. The, um, the speaking of which, by the way. If uh, if you don't follow Umberto Gonzalez on Instagram, he is one of the uh, one of the better follows, I think, in my opinion. Is that your yeah, he, dog barking or is that mine? Huh? Is your dog barking? That's ours. Yeah. Okay, I can't tell if it's our dog or yours. <laughs> um, but no, Umberto uh, Gonzalez posted a few, I think, very insightful things uh, in regards to the entire, like just this whole Henry Cavill fiasco. Um, he of course posted the quote and you just mentioned it, uh, from Warner brothers. We have a great relationship and great respect for Henry Cavill that continues to remain unchanged. Additionally, we have made no current decisions regarding any upcoming Superman films. And the reason why I say that and why I think that is important is because, uh, Umberto is the one who actually pointed this out. Um, he made it. He made the point that this almost seems very much like when an athlete, like a professional athlete, is going through a contract negotiation with like with a with a team. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. And that um, I don't necessarily believe that things are you know, especially according to that that quote. I just think maybe they're just trying to get the guy more money or get, you know, get the guy. I don't, you know, I, I just think the negotiations are ongoing, I should say. Yeah. He's about to be busy. So I don't know. I don't expect to see him back. You don't. Okay. So you don't think so? No, I wish he would, but I don't see it happening. Okay. Now I personally, I, I hope he, I hope this is just all sort of like a miscommunication, maybe a misunderstanding a little bit in the idea of like, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, you know, when they were negotiating earlier this week or whatever, or whenever it was, uh, Henry Cavill's representatives or whatever was just like, okay, let, let's take a break and maybe we'll come back to this. And, and then of course the news got out there that, that oh my God, he's never going to be Superman ever again. And I just, I hope that the case is, is that he and his team of representatives, management, whatever, and DC can come to some kind of agreement for him to continue to be Superman. Dude, because, I mean, we've already basically lost Ben Affleck. I don't know if I could take losing Henry Cavill, too. Yeah, I mean, this kind of is where Flashpoint makes the most sense. Uh, Yeah, I could see that in order to just tie up the loose ends. I don't want Flashpoint because I don't think there's better Flash stories to tell, I think. But, yeah, I think that's a conduit for a Flash movie at this point. Right. Um, no, man, it's so funny too, because, you know, I was under the impression that, you know, after Man of Steel and BVS and Justice League, like, I know people have their opinions about Henry Cavill's Superman. You know what I mean? And maybe that's just a, maybe that's just a, 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 a result of people just complaining on the internet. You know what I mean? I thought that I was like one of the only people I knew who really liked Henry Cavill, the Superman. You know what I mean? I thought, I, th- I thought the majority of people didn't actually like him as Superman, but then of course the news comes out today and like everyone's complaining like, Oh my God, he's the greatest Superman ever. How could you do that? Well, this is what I almost tweeted today, but I wasn't gonna, I was like, I stopped myself. Cause like, I felt like it was just kind of more hateful than anything, but just like how people did talk a bunch of crap about him for years and all of a sudden there's rumors that he's leaving and people are like, no, WB sucks. Why are they doing this? And it's like, 
it's just the internet hating. And I think it's crazy because there's people who complained about him for years and now right. if they get rid of him, they're going to complain. It's it's annoying. It's, it's crazy. This is non, non-news to me. Like, I it's gotcha. like one of the things where I'm like, I'm like, it's all speculation. Um, it's crazy, man, because, you know, like, yeah, it's just the fact that I did feel like, I do feel like a lot of people were in agreement that, okay, so maybe not so many people liked Man of Steel, obviously not a lot of people liked BVS, and I think even fewer people like Justice League. I admit that I personally think that Man of Steel is a really good film, and I think people ought to give it, you know, if anybody out there has not seen it, in a long time, I would give that movie another, another go to see how you feel about it. Maybe another time around. But with all of that said, I do think that by the end of justice league, I really think, especially with the Superman character specifically, I feel like they were in a really good place. I feel like they had maybe figured it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the last, the last 10 minutes of that movie found out like, it's not to me, it's still kind of like, they could bring someone new in from like an alternate reality or something where it's not as dark if that's really what they want to do. Uh-huh. But how did Superman fight Doomsday die? And I, I like Batman v Superman. I like, I think Justice League is fine. It's not great. It's messy. But I kind of still feel like people are like, well, the end of that movie is the Superman we want. And I'm like, yeah, but how did he get there? He just had to fight someone else. Like he didn't, yeah. there wasn't any like revelation. Like, is it because he died? He came back and he's a different like mindset. Like it just wasn't, it was very lazy. But it was like shoehorning in the Superman people wanted because people wanted it. But I didn't hate it. You know, I like the way that it's sort of, you know, I hate, yep. I, I, I don't like Justice League so much. It's one of my least favorite DC movies. But, yes, but was it the character changing to fit the story or was that part of the story? To me, it was the character changing to fit the the story changing to fit the characters um, changes. I don't know. Like I it mean, wasn't. I wouldn't agree with, I wouldn't say that that was that so much, but I mean, I do think there was some, obviously some of that they, they had, you know, heard people's complaints about the character and the costume and the colors and the moodiness and all of that kind of stuff. But I mean, just, uh, I guess where I'm at currently, and then this is the reason why I, you know, I get upset about the Ben Affleck thing. And now this Henry Cavill thing upsets me even more is because, I feel like we were getting to a place, especially with Shazam and Aquaman coming out, that I feel like, yeah, it was a bumpy road, but I felt like we were figuring it out. You know what I mean? And it was heading towards a good direction. And now with the notion of like possibly bringing in new actors to replace actors or focusing on other characters or whatever, I just, I just, I, I, I don't, I hate that. Like, I, I wish, I wish, uh, I wish it wasn't that way. Yeah, but what? Uh, Man, it still came out, what, 2013, 2014? I want to say so 2013, it's like, yeah. Henry Cavill's been waiting around for a long time for a sequel to that movie. Yeah. That's too long. Yeah. There's I, no he's in sequel now. He's going to be filming Witcher, which is going to take up at least the end of this year, probably through the beginning of next year. He's got to film Man They're from Uncle 2. Yeah. <laughs> I wish he was in the next Mission Impossible. Yeah. I would watch it spin off. Yeah. Um... Mustache impossible. Yeah. Uh, did you hear at all? You know, where this all kind of stems from is the fact that, you know, I didn't, you know, it's so funny. You know, I, I, I heard about this news all day, but I never actually read the, the story. This all stems from negotiations around him appearing in Shazam, right? As a cameo. Yes, he signed out for four films. He's appeared in three. So if he appeared in Shazam, there was scheduling conflicts. Right. But technically, that would count as an appearance unless he does that as like a favor. Um, right. Because I think like when Chris Evans appeared in Thor: The Dark World. He counted that as a favor. I don't think that counted as an appearance in the end. Yeah, I think it but just it depends on the actor or whatever. You know, that stuff kind of gets kind of like it's that's in kind of a gray area when you have like yeah. these universes and you got characters popping up here and there. Um, but no, did you hear that? Uh, Umberto Gonzalez, hero of Hollywood, he actually went into what the cameo would have been if it would have happened. Did you did you hear that at all? No, I didn't read that. I didn't uh, read that. Well, he just posted it on Instagram earlier today. I thought it was pretty interesting. It was just um, it was just Clark Kent at the end of Shazam talking to the kid version of Billy Batson, saying like. 
we're going to keep an eye out on you kind of, you know what I mean? Like, okay. you, you know, not the Superman version, but Clark Kent and the kid version of Billy Batson and, you know, towards the end of the movie, I don't know if they're a post credit scene or whatever you want to call it, but, um, but I just thought that was interesting. And now that, now that is starting to make sense as, you know, kind of where this all comes from, I hope they figure it out, man. I, I personally, I like the way this universe is shaping up. And if it were up to me, Henry Cavill, like I'd, I'd, I'd give him and what, you know, his team, whatever they want. And I would, uh, I would, uh, you know, figure, hopefully try to figure things out with Ben Affleck, but the Ben Affleck thing seems to be kind of, uh, um, a lost cause at this point. It seems like, it seems like he has officially moved on. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, hey, but the good news is if they don't bring Henry Cavill back and one day in the next few years, because, you know, you know, if they don't bring Henry Cavill back, eventually we're going to get a new Superman. Um, if that's a recast or, you know, whatever they end up doing, uh, uh, you know, like a reboot. I, I don't know, man. Dude, I honestly I wonder if if they lose Henry Cavill as Superman, like the 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 notion of possibly rebooting the entire thing just m- makes a little bit you know makes a little bit more sense to me in my opinion you know what i mean no they're not going to get rid of gal Gadot and jason momoa though no see i i agree with that i you know it's very confusing man but that's dc for you dc and warner brothers like confusing as as all you know as all get out um let's see uh oh what 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 i was going to say is like you know if we don't have, uh, if we don't, if we don't get Cavill back and we get a new Superman eventually, they probably aren't going to do a movie with Lex Luthor or Zod as the villain. <laughs> well, we might actually see another Superman villain for once. You know what I mean? Yeah, I still want to see like a uh, Brainiac. Of course, he's more of a Justice League though, in a sense. Right. Or um, Metallo would be cool to make an appearance. I don't know if you could get a full movie out of him. Did um, you- Mr. Mixel clicks it or whatever i don't know how to say it he's pretty cool he's fun bizarro would be cool um a lot of a lot of his villains i feel like are you're better off doing two or three in a movie where i don't agree with that with a lot of superhero movies yeah superman's uh what do they call that uh superman's what do they call that like your villains uh rogues gallery rogues gallery yeah superman's rogues gallery isn't as strong as some other characters but um, I think, uh, yeah, I think Lex Luthor is one of the best out there, but after that, it's a big drop off. If you even Lex, you can, you kind of have to do the same thing every time. Yeah. Um, there was something else I was about to mention and now I've forgotten. I could uh, be Jordan. Uh, well, I was about to get to that. So, you know, uh, the, you know, as this news kind of trickled out and, and rooted its way through the internet today, um, you know, and, and, and I don't know how realistic some of these things are because I saw uh, something that um, uh, that Jeremy Conrad guy on Twitter posted today of MCU Cosmic mentioning that it seems like every time there's there's a big kind of shakeup over at Warner Brothers, somehow Michael B. Jordan is brought up like in one way or another. Like they yeah, he's wanted, a WB guy. Yeah, they wanted Michael Jordan or Michael B. Jordan for like the Matrix reboot or the Matrix continuation, oh, the and but no, the, so yeah, the rumor then eventually came out, uh, you know, later on as the day sort of progressed, that oh, Michael B. Jordan is now interested in playing Clark Kent and Superman, and I mean, like, it, dude, I think that's fine. I, I would, I wouldn't mind that at all. You know, I, I think some people might have an issue with that. Um, but I think realistically, if you just if you if you think about it, I mean, there's there's no reason why there's no legitimate reason why you couldn't have a black guy playing Superman. I mean, that I mean, when you think about that, that's just what it comes down to. That's and I think that's I think that's nonsense. I think there's no reason for something like that. I'm not sure if that's real. I'm not sure if the Michael B. Jordan thing is is legitimate. But if it were up to me, and you know, I was looking for a guy to replace him, I mean, like. I wouldn't keep I wouldn't keep things like that, you know, as a as a reason to not as to not at least give somebody an audition. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think uh, he'd be fine as Superman. I don't. I think that's that's fake. I don't think that's real. Yeah, I don't buy it at all. 
But huh? what? Oh, you kept freezing on me. Sorry. Oh, sorry. It's just uh, it throws me off sometimes because like I I hear you, but then I'm looking at the screen and it's delayed. So you're still talking on the screen. So it kind of throws me off sometimes. I have to remember that it's delayed. Uh, but no, I mean, um, uh, you know, I'm open to just about anybody, man. I um, you know, I was reading some interesting things earlier today that I think I don't. Th- you know, I've heard this before, but I, I, and I don't know how realistic it is, but like when you're talking about the idea of, of recasting somebody, you know, somebody had posted something today talking about John Hamm as hey, frozen on YouTube as, um, oh yeah, we are frozen. John Hamm as, 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 uh, Ben Affleck. That's fine. That's been a rumor for years and, but I think he's a little too old i think they're gonna want to go younger we are frozen aren't we and see like i don't know i don't know how to fix this other than um we're back are we back say something and see if it's you can hear yeah we're live you can hear hey we're back yeah we're live hey we're back hey we're back cool can you hear me yeah, it just was sounded kind of okay. weird on your end. I forget that how they hear you is weird on your end. I forget that how they hear you is they probably hear me a lot more clear. No, it sounds yeah, they, they probably hear me a lot oh. more clear. No, it sounds they probably hear me a lot more clear. No, All right, let's sounds, keep moving. I don't know. It sounds kind of glitchy on your end, but I I can go back and fix that later. It's fine. Um but no, man. Um when it comes to recap, you know, we were just talking about the idea of, of recasting Superman, the Superman character, and of course uh, Michael B. Jordan's name got brought up. I don't think I don't I don't I don't think that's legitimate. But I mean, if it came down to that, I wouldn't I would be for it. You know, I've said um, I've said for you know a long time that I don't think a a actor's race necessarily is indicative of what kind of character they can play in a particular project. You know what I mean? Um, and I, yeah, I think if it's definitive to the character, then yeah, that makes sense. But you know, a lot of times it's not. Yeah. Um, but no, and what one thing that I saw that it came out at some point today, somebody retweeted it or something that, uh, you know, bringing back the whole thing about John Hamm wanting to play Batman. Uh, and that's one of the ones that I don't, I don't hate, you know, um, I think he kind of has an Affleck kind of look to him, and I think he could pull it off. But I heard something interesting today, and this is something that I don't know if you've heard it. Have you heard the rumor about Kit Harrington wanting to be Bruce Wayne, Batman? Yeah, I thought WB was eyeing him. That'd be fine, sure, whatever. Like a, I guess a younger Batman. Well, yeah, you don't you don't need to Jew John Ham now. He's too old. All that stuff is too old. You don't need to what? You don't need to get John Ham. He's too old. Oh, oh. Um, so you're more a Kit Harrington kind of guy then? Uh, sure. Maybe not him specifically, but sure. I think he could pull it off, man. I think he's got the look. Brother. Yeah, he'd, be fine. he'd be fine to do it. I mean, I'll, I'll give him that. Brother. I love his accent. Um, yeah. if you were going to recast Superman, who would you pick? Or who would you choose? Uh, the Wonder Boy of the DCEU that has never been cast in a DCEU role? Army Hammer. Huh. He's been he's been rumored for like every guy. Yeah, like he was you know, he was Batman and then that movie uh-huh. got scrapped. Uh-huh. And and Green then, Lantern, uh, and then he then uh, he got rumored for Green Lantern. Hal Jordan, yeah. I think he was rumored for Shazam too. Uh, that's I mean, he would have made got, a good Shazam. Yeah, man. Now that you say that, I I mean I think he could pull it off, man. He's a yeah, good enough actor. Lighter. Man, but whatever do what i said a little bit lighter hair than superman but sure. yeah he's he's a little bit more like sandy br- i think blondish. he looks more like superman than batman though yeah i think that you know when i think about him playing batman like i think he could have been a g- good bruce wayne like he's got that sort of like playboy kind of vibe to him you know yeah i'm not sure if he could ever look like really but dude mean. i mean like i would have said the same thing about christian bale as batman so Oh, dude, watch American Psycho. I finally watched it a couple weeks ago. That made me believe. I've never Batman. seen American Psycho, which is it's unfortunate. It's on Amazon Prime. That's Isaac's favorite movie. It's on Amazon and Prime? 
Yes. And I'll after I watched it, it, after I watched it too, I learned so much about Isaac. I felt like I never knew because I'm like, I get why this is. You just gotta watch it, dude. It's messed Is it up. one of his favorite bands, like Genesis or or Phil Collins or something? Probably. I don't know. Probably. I thought oh, he mentioned that in the movie, and you know, that's talks, like it's Whitney Houston, uh, Phil Collins. And it's someone else that are all really brought up in the movie. And Jared Leto's in the movie. Oh yeah, he gets killed, doesn't he? Yeah. Spoiler alert. Dude, it's good. You should you should watch it this week. It's I'll good. check it out. Yeah, I'll check it out for sure. I've seen it on. I think it's actually on Netflix too. So probably. Um, but no, let's let's uh, let's put the kibosh on this Henry Cavill thing. Long story short, um, I think we're both in agreement that it would be unfortunate if they lost Henry Cavill. Um, I think you should do whatever it takes to keep them around, but at the end of the day, your universe has got to move on. And I mean, maybe they, you know, the, you know, we got the news a couple of weeks ago that they're moving, you know, all, all, uh, I forget the metaphor, but like all, uh, I, f- I don't know. I forget the metaphor, ahead. but, uh, like all steam ahead, full steam ahead, full steam ahead, full steam ahead on, like Supergirl and, and, you know, properties like that. So, um, I don't know. We will just have to see. What do you guys think about the notion of Henry Cavill possibly no longer continuing in the role of Superman? Are you guys upset like basically all the internet is, even though it seemed like all of the internet hated Henry Cavill Superman uh, a month ago? <laughs> um, what do you guys think about this whole Henry Cavill shenanigans? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. With that said, Eric, there was something, um, you know, this is something interesting that has come out and I, and you had mentioned that you hadn't seen this yet. And uh, I did, uh, I looked it up before the show, but yeah. Okay. So time, you've seen Scott the image me, now? I, said, I like sent, I was like, I can't believe I haven't heard about this, but it was a thing that was already out. So. Yeah. That, that original. Okay. So what we're talking about is there, so there's been a, um, a piece of, uh, a piece of, what would you call it? Not artwork, but like concept art. Uh, yeah, concept art is a good idea for the character yeah, was, designs of Hulk yeah, and Captain America and Iron Man and who else? Ant Man. All of the characters from Avengers Four. The the remaining characters for Avengers Four. And today we actually got a good look at a few of those characters. In a little bit, you know, in a separated but in a more HD status, um, and I'm glad you you had seen that before, had you not? Yeah. What do you think about it? What do you think about Hulk uh, wearing a suit? Professor Hulk, I think that's an interesting idea. He looks like he's like kind of smiling in a very Mark Ruffalo way in the concept <laughs> art. Yeah, a little bit. So of course, it'd be Mark Ruffalo controlling the Hulk, which seems kind of weird for the Hulk because he's kind of his own brain. So. Um, I don't know. That outfit's kind of strange, but... Oh, you know, one thing that... Uh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, what did you think about people talking about... You know, to jump back to the earlier topic. What do you think about people talking about uh, Henry Cavill as Captain Britain? <laughs> no, I don't. I no. don't see why they would do that. You're not in for that? What about Henry Cavill like as... Wol- cameo thing. What about Henry Cavill as Wolverine? No, definitely not. He's way too big. That's what she said. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Wolverine's supposed to be like a little short stubby guy. Like, let's go try nah, that. No, nah. he's like 6'2", dude. He's actually in the comics. How tall is... Uh, he's supposed to be like 5'2", in the comics. Yeah, he's like super small. Yeah. Um, I can't... Get Kevin fu- Hart to play Wolverine. There you go. Kevin Hart or Joe Pesci or Danny DeVito or somebody. Joe Pesci would be kind of cool as Wolverine, honestly. <laughs> Anyways, let's. Uh, so I, yeah, I just I wanted to mention that real quick with the notion if like if um uh you know if we lose if we lose Henry Cavill on the on the DC side maybe maybe Kevin Feige and those guys over there can pick him up, uh, give him a roster spot. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure. Uh, let's see here. So back to this, uh, this Avengers four image. Um, let's see, dude, I want to drag this over again, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just have to edit it in later. So we got really, uh, really HD, very, uh, good looks at, at, um, Captain Marvel, which I mean, of of course we got a, uh, you know, we got real looks at her and her outfit last week. Uh, a cl- very, you know, a kind of a, a close-up look of Hulk in this new sort of 
stretchy spandexy Under Armour outfit. And um, he's even got little things on his feet, which I guess is cool. And uh, yeah, stretchy suit. So there you go. Uh, we got a sh- clean shaven uh, Chris Evans, Captain America, with a very yeah, cool. I contradict the time travel theory of him in New York at the Battle now, of New York. Now, does it? Is it the younger version, or is that. Because this. I'm th- at Battle of New York set photos, is that a younger cap, or is that modern cap in a, <sighs> any younger cap's costume? That's a good question, man, because this outfit is. It's a brand new outfit. And I like it a yeah, lot. Yeah, it looks, it looks like a good, like it looks like a brighter Winter Soldier outfit. I kind of like it. Yeah, and it's got it's a very cool blend of like the scaly sort of like traditional Captain America outfit, and then of course like the cinematic version of of the of the Cap outfit. Let's uh let's look real quick at those Avengers four set photos, and let's see. Let's just confirm this right now. Um, well, no, I'm saying that. For the face, because the face is clean shaven. I know that that's the Avengers one costume he's in, in those photos. It is. I, I wonder I'm, if it's him I'm, getting into younger Cap's costume, or if that's actually a younger yeah. Cap. That's the terrible, like the worst part of Avengers. Captain oh, I America's like the costume. awful outfit. What? I like it a lot. You I like know that it outfit? Long term, but I think it's fine. Yeah. It's so funny. I don't think I hate any of his outfits. It's so funny, man. Like I really like all of the Captain America outfits. This one though, it just bugs me, man. And it's one of those things. It's like, how did I not notice it when I was watching Avengers for the first time? You know what I mean? Like, it's it's by far it the cool, huh? It looked cool. Uh, yeah, I guess. And I was just caught up in the caught up in the Think moment. Bill Coulson helped design that. He was a super fan. He was like a fanboy. Um, so it would have been practical, but it also would have been very like bright and hopey and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. The Captain America outfit from the first Avengers movie is pretty bad. I think in the context of the story, I like it, but, you know, to each their own. To each their own. Though, however, this concept art with this new outfit is badass, man. And then, of course, um, the uh, we got to look at Tony still in the Bleeding Edge Mark 50 from Infinity War. Um, yeah, which that kind of supports a rumor if there's a big time jump there's a rumor that he refuses to work on any other suits or anything. And like he completely stopped cause he's so depressed and maybe he only had, that's his newest suit at the time. At some point you've got enough suits, man. You can only do so much, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like dude, especially with like the nanotechnology and everything like that's about, but you think if there's a time jump. He just hasn't for no reason. What you think if there's a time jump, he just hasn't made another suit for no reason. Oh no. I mean, I do No, I'm being kind of, vis- Vashishish, but, um, but I'm just, you know, saying like, you know, that, that armor was pretty powerful. I think, you know, if he got to a point to where like, oh, this is, this is probably as good as I can do, uh, you know, it, it would, I would understand that. And okay. So I hadn't seen the rest. Of, I had only seen those four when I looked at this earlier. So then we got a, you know, a, another look at Thor kind of, this looks like the same outfit from infinity war with, yeah. uh, with the storm bringer. What's that thing called? Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker. I don't know why I said Stormbreaker. <laughs> uh, rocket. And that's it. So no close-up looks of War Machine, Ant-Man, Black Widow, or Nebula. But I think nope. everyone else got Or Hawkeye. So you took a look at these images. Does this, does this do anything for you? Does it make it move at all? It did, it did like three months ago when it came out. To be honest. Um, oh, so these new images. See, the reason why I'm bringing it up those is aren't because new images they're just high res images of right. the photos. Already. Yeah. We we never talked about this on the podcast originally because I thought I felt like this was kind of a spoiler back then, uh-huh. and I feel like so many enough people have seen it now to where like I feel like it's okay to talk about it because. Um, it's- it's fine. I'm not a big fan of the Hulk's outfit. I think it's weird for him to have his shirt on. It's weird. Like, I know that man. sounds weird, but he like rips out it like it's the Hulk. It's kind of strange. Everything else looks fine. And this, of course, like goes into that theory that like at some point in Infinity War, like Banner and Hulk like meld into yep. a uh, what? What's the term? It has a name. Professor like, Hulk. say Professor it again. Hulk. Professor Hulk. Professor Hulk? No, that's not it. Um, Professor Hulk. I, I know. That's, I heard you. Um, that's what it is. Look it up on the article you're on. 
Um, that's what they call it. Yes. Garrett had called it something else. Garrett had called it like, there's another term that he had referred to. Um, like, like Professor Hulk. Nah, not Professor Hulk. It's like World Ender Hulk or something like that. There's World Breaker Hulk, but that's not how he's dressed at all. That's what I'm talking about. World World. That's Breaker. not what he's dressed like at all. That's like a very savage Hulk. Professor Hulk. That's like he's got a hammer, I believe, with World Breaker Hulk. I hope they don't refer to him as Professor Hulk. <laughs> I think this is. I think this is like. Can this be just like a code name? <laughs> That'll be like a Tony Stark line or something. Yeah. No, I mean, okay. So I'm. I. I am very for the idea of having a Hulk that is like the best parts of Hulk and Bruce Banner going forward. You know what I mean? I think because it's happened so many times in the comics, like I think it's just, it makes sense to explore that in the movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Here's a picture of world breaker Hulk, which looks just like regular Hulk. Ah, okay. I gotcha. Or green. So, okay. Um, but no, that's just uh, some images that came out. Thought it was interesting. Thought it was worth talking about, considering we had not mentioned this uh, this initial image on the podcast yet. Because I do think that, you know, I, dude, I want to say this image came out not long after Infinity War came out, and I'm like, this no, is a like big it, like I want to say a week or two. It was yeah, it was not long, and I'm like, if you hadn't seen Infinity War yet, then this is like kind of a spoiler for. You know, who does, you know, who's, I I mean, you could think it was just like one of the teams or something, but yeah. Yeah. The West coast Avengers. It's kind of crazy to think that that's what's left. Right. I mean, you still have a Koye, a Baku, if you're Shuri, Baku, Wong. Yeah. Which Uh, I guess you wouldn't really count them, which almost Nebula, if Nebula wasn't Thanos' daughter, you wouldn't really count her either. Right. But everyone in that picture is very important. I so. hope that at one point they get to the point to where, like, they consider it. I was hoping, and that was one thing that I wanted in Infinity War, is, like, M'Baku and Shuri and Wong and Nebula and all of them kind of become, like, official, unofficial Avengers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that that slows the pace a little bit, though. Like, you just kind of let them do something heroic. Kind of like that artwork from, or that that animated thing from last week where it's got oh. it's got everybody in it, including the Fantastic Four and, and the it. X-Men. I when it gets to that part. And the Defenders and Killmonger's back alive for some reason. <laughs> yeah, why is Killmonger there? And Blade's in there, too. <laughs> Dude, that's like just the ultimate, like, fan fantasy there. It's an ultimate fangasm right there. Um, yeah. Speaking of fangasms... Eric, you have played a video game. I have not. Eric, why don't you tell us about your initial reactions slash thoughts to Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Pro? Okay. I actually don't have the Pro. Well, I'm saying it's for every PlayStation system. Oh, yeah. That's just one system. That's just a different variant. Gotcha. Okay. uh, You can play it on, like, both. Yeah. I don't know anything about video games. Um, Yeah, I got you. Um, so it's a story that takes place eight years after he first became Spider-Man. So everything's kind of going on in his life. He's out of college. Um, him and MJ have been broken up for about six months at the oh, time wow. it starts. Um, but it's the, without diving into spoilers, cause a lot of the story is spoilers and I'll still kind of save it. Um, the story kind of start, the big villains in the story is kind of like, well, the beginning is you finally lock up Wilson Fisk, who's the kingpin. And he's kind of like, you'll regret this because he was such a powerful, like, force on crime in the city that it kind of lets loose a lot of other. It becomes like a turf war. Like, Fisk is in prison. So now, you know, we have all these other gangs and villains that can kind of, like, try to take over. Um, And there's obviously a lot of other things happening in the background, too, of the story that start to kind of come to a head as the story goes on. But, uh... But, yeah, so that was... uh, It's a cool story so far. There's a lot of uh, villains in it. And there's also a couple of villain main villains, I feel like, that aren't in it necessarily just yet, but I feel like they'll be in the end of it or in the next game. Um, the, How far into it are you? Um, I do every side quest and every side thing as they pop up. So story-wise, I'm probably only like a third of the way, if not a little oh. bit more. But I'm like pretty – like it's going to hit a point where I have nothing side quests to do. Right. And I'm only going to do the story and just pop through it. Because, I mean, that, so, that's sort of the, the – um, the... 
I can't think of the word, but like the, the completionist. No, 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 no. I'm saying like that's sort of the draw of this particular Spider-Man game is because it's so expansive is because it's so open world and you can kind of yes. explore and do your own thing and don't have to you- necessarily stick to the main quests. Yeah, and that's a, that's a thing that's becoming more and more popular, I think. And you so, know, it's just a matter. Of, isn't the isn't the news that there's a Superman game that's coming out that like, that's supposed no, to be that's like a, that? That's that's about as much of a rumor as Henry Cavill leaving. Like, oh really? Thing to warn it. Yeah, that would um, be cool though. But yeah, so some of the side missions you can do in the game have to deal with like Black Cat, um, Oscorp research stations with Harry Osborn, um, finding pigeons. Like, there's some kind of weird stuff, but. It's it's cool because a lot of, of that side, going. a lot of the side missions actually like feel important. They don't feel like a waste of time. Like getting to talk or getting to hear Harry Osborne in some voicemails because he's off in Europe. Um, it's cool interacting with Black Cat is really cool. So every, it's it's impressive how much how many characters are in that story, but how a lot of them are just kind of like put in certain ways to where it doesn't feel overwhelming. Gotcha. Um, and then also you get to see the um, you know Sanctum Sanctorum. You get to see Avengers Tower. Do you um, get to see Wakanda any of those Embassy. characters, or no? No, he makes a comment about the Avengers. Hearing the Avengers are on the West Coast, um, oh. and they're probably surfing. But they're probably there is a rumor because you know there's that Avengers game that's like going to be coming out. There's a rumor that this game takes place in the same universe, but I'm not sure if that's really the case. Right. But there is a rumor that that's, that's like, the thing. I like this. I, you know, I've seen a few. Um, you know, like gameplay videos and stuff like that and like cut scenes and whatnot i kind of dig this version of peter parker that they've gone with and i like i like the well, outfit. i like the outfit a lot the out the oh the white spider with the white on it the i all the different costumes are really cool i as soon there's as a I got ton the stark, of different outfits right mm-hmm, as soon as i got the stark one i went ahead and went to that of course which is a homecoming outfit which is the one from infinity war right no homecoming they have the infinity they have the iron spider but they also have the homecoming outfit, and gotcha. uh, I went to that one because I really like how it's like that red's like really bright. It's uh, I like the way it contrasts with everything. But, I gotcha. So, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy the game. The swinging's really good. New York's massive. You, I still even as I'm playing, I'm like, oh, I haven't been over here yet, or I haven't like been in this section yet. So it's really fun. It's one of those like as soon as we're done here, I want to play more. So very it's, cool, uh, it's man. Fun. I'll do like a full review thing after I'm finished with the story. I, yeah, I uh, I definitely want to check it out. I mean, you know, I'm not a big game gamer guy, so I think you'll like. Um, but I do think I would really enjoy enjoy checking checking out that game. Um, it's made me want to get a PlayStation. I don't, I don't have a PlayStation anymore, but um, I would definitely like to check that out. Something it seems like a lot well, of I got fun one for sure. Garrett doesn't buy it, huh? Do what? That I got one for sale if Garrett doesn't buy it. Oh, okay. Very yeah, I got you. Uh Jeremy Conrad just tweeted that um Disney China showed a special trailer of the live action Lion King to local press for next year. That's kind of interesting. That's okay. Uh, and we're supposed to be getting that Captain Marvel trailer any day now, I think. Um yeah. but no, yeah, I just real quick just wanted to touch upon it. Obviously I don't have much to say because I, I haven't I have not played uh the Spider Man PlayStation game yet, but um, I would expect something to come out on the channel about it. Cause I think at some point we can work something out to where we can, uh, you know, do like a, a let's play or something like that with that game. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think, I think we should. Uh, I think, uh, for the captain Marvel trailer, I'll wait to watch it. I'll, I'll do a live reaction with you if you want. Dude, that would be cool. Cause yeah, cause we make the Skype to do it, but somebody, yeah. somebody had mentioned that I think, uh, there's a correlation between like when entertainment weekly usually releases like their first full spread of a movie. And then like, it's like two weeks after that is the first trailer. There's kind of a little formula to it. I think it'll, I really think it'll premiere. I said this last week, I think on your show, but I think it'll, it'll premiere during like Sunday night football, Monday night, third football or Thursday night football. I think that makes, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, Eric, with all of that said, I mean, uh, the Spider-Man thing sounds like a lot of fun. I definitely want to check it out. I'm sure anybody who checks out this podcast probably has already done so. So uh, that's uh, I'm probably one of the only ones involved with this podcast who uh, who will who has not checked it out. So 
we definitely need to get on that. Um, one other thing that I wanted to talk about, and this is this is a little bit uh, a little bit different than the topics that we usually uh, that we usually tackle on this show. Um, uh, and that's of course like tech news, like technology. You know, you and I are kind of like Apple fanboys, and yep. Apple had their annual. Um, I don't even know what it's called. Like their annual, like it's rem- just their like. It's just an Apple keynote. Like, that's all it is, really. Uh, right, right. Well, it's not really a keynote. It's an Apple event. Right. They're the, keynotes for WWDC. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, they, uh, so we got the official announcement today. Of course, the, the leaks uh, seem to have been, uh, been out there for a number of months. And, you know, then it becomes just sort of a game of like whose leaks are more right, like this person's or this person's, you know what I mean? But, we did get the news today that there will be what three new versions of the iPhone for next yeah, year. Yeah, you got the iPhone uh, 10R, the iPhone 10S, and the iPhone 10S Max. Why have they gone to Max instead of Plus? Do you have any idea why they've done that? Because I think they're trying to go ahead and differentiate, differentiate, um, and not just say it's a bigger screen, but it's also more powerful, and get away from that name because. Now that the screen takes up the whole body of the phone, right? It's more like it's a bigger phone all around. Even though the even though the plus was, I think it's just a way to rebrand too. That's just one of those things that just makes you go like, hmm. I mean, I feel like the plus name sufficed, and now it's like, you know, it's one of those things that it just makes you question like, hmm. But I mean, I, I mean, it doesn't bother me. But you know, it's whatever. Um, I think the uh, the ten R. Is it the 10? What is it? The 10? 10, 10R. That's the LCD one. The 10R is interesting only because it seems like as far as features go, it's a little bit, it's not so much, I mean, it's not so much a drop in features from the other two phones, but it's going to be quite a bit cheaper, like 300 bucks cheaper or something like that. Yeah, it's going to be a no home button. It's a glass body. You can get it in coral, blue, red, yellow, silver, or black. I believe um, orange. There's, like, o- there's an orange one too. I think coral. Yeah. It's oh, a- you said. Oh, okay. Yeah, coral. Yeah, they're not. Coral. They're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, coral. Uh, but but yeah. So that one only has a single lens camera on the back. Yeah. But they said you yeah. can still do uh, uh do like a the little play with the depth of field. That, which really like the Google Pixel doesn't require dual lens to do portrait mode. Right. And so it's like, well, if you got the technology on the cheaper phone, why do you need it on the Tenno. Right. Unlike and the, the way that the sort of I, the way that Whatever. sort of works is when you have a when you have a camera that works with the dual lenses like that, that is an actual effect that the two lenses are able to sort of pull off. This is like a little bit of like like photography nerd stuff. Um, but when you have a single lens like that, like on the on the on the Pixel or this version of the iPhone, that effect is done sort of digitally. You know what I mean? And it seems to be pretty effective, but it's not like the real thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Which I think fine. the uh, the ten R actually looks like the back of the phone looks reminds me of the five quite a bit. But if it was all glass, but um yeah, I may pick up the what was that ten X, I don't know yet. It'd probably be it'd be the first time in a while I haven't like upgraded right away. Um not working at a phone store was kind of weird because I've always well I don't I haven't missed an Apple event to announce an iPhone. And I think four or five years, right? But I wasn't able to live today. Um, so, how dude? Uh, you probably yeah. spend so much money on phones, man. Yeah, probably. Because you got every one, right? Pretty much. I know I didn't do this. No, I didn't do the seven. I didn't do the six S plus. But everything before it, from the three GS to the six plus, uh-huh. and then the then the ten, the or the seven plus and the ten. So yeah, I mean, I've I, I've only I've only missed out on three iPhones. Yeah. And it's, um, comes with the territory of, you no longer working for AT&T, I would assume. Um, well, I actually, I didn't get any deal or I wasn't able to get one faster working for them at all. I still had to do everything like everyone else. Yeah. But I mean, like if you needed one, you could track one down, I'm sure. Um, well, I, no, we wouldn't get them in. Th- we wouldn't get that many in cause so many would be shipped out to people. Yeah. Um, so we just got like very a pain, big. man, trying to find a new iPhone. Like, well, if I decide to order a 10s max, I'll be online at 2 AM. Like I always am online at 2 AM Friday morning. I'll order the phone. Then I'll go back to bed. I gotcha. 
Um, it's weird, man, because you know, I um, you know, back when uh, back when upgrades actually meant something, you know, upgrades don't really mean anything anymore. Um, uh, back when you actually could upgrade and it mean and it meant you could get a new iPhone for like two hundred bucks. I got a new, I got every other generation of iPhone. So yeah, yeah. A lot of people do that every two years. Yeah. yeah so, you know, I got the three G and then I went to, I didn't, I, I skipped every S generation when they were doing the S gener, you know, there for a while. So, you know, I went from the three G to the, I guess the four and then to the five and to the six. And, and now, um, with the seven, the seven, I guess six plus and then seven plus. Um, and that was one thing for me is like, you know, when the 10 came out last year, I was like, obviously it makes sense that they were going, that they would at least, they, that they would release a larger 10 at some point. You know, I, I, I had wanted a larger iPhone for forever, dude. You know, I hated how small the iPhone was, especially I've got kind of big hands. Um, I always wanted a bigger iPhone. And when they finally came out with it, I, uh, I was really excited about that. But it's funny, man. I don't know if it's just like the old man in me or what, like me getting older. Like I'll pro- I guess I and, I, and it's funny, I'm due for an upgrade because I've had this phone now for two years and, but I don't really have a, a really strong desire to get a new phone. You know what I mean? When like, yeah, I used to be that way. I always wanted the new phone. You know what I'm saying? I, I always wanted like the generate the next generation phone or whatever. Um, I find myself like, I mean, it's got a lot of the cool features. I mean, obviously like I would really like to be able to wirelessly charge my phone. Obviously, I guess I could, if I had one of those cases or whatever, but yeah, I um, wirelessly charge my phone at home and at work. Really? Yeah. Which I probably shouldn't keep it on a charger all day, but at night it's on my charging pad and at work I have a stand up charging dock. Oh yeah. So I just next to my computer. So I just set it there and it, it like, it just really to hold it there all day. So it's not in my pocket, but yeah. it charges all day. I don't know, man. Um, I'm not crazy about, you know, like, cause I kind of missed this last one. Cause I, I still, you know, had still had my phone, you know, I was, I was, I took my phone out of its case the other day and I'm like, you know, I don't really like the glass on the back. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I like it. I think it's fine. I think you would like the 10 cause the pictures are, do make a big difference. Yeah, I probably would. I would like to t- be able to take like really nice photos. Cause I saw some of the example photo granted those, those photos that they use in the keynotes and the videos that they use in the keynotes are somehow miraculously like they look like they oh, were yeah, shot yeah. with a professional grade camera. It's yeah. shot with iPhone, but that doesn't always mean that they weren't doctored somehow. Yeah. yeah. Or like under the perfect conditions, you know what I mean? For like yeah. really good video. Um, what, what cell service do you have? AT&T. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought so. Yeah. We did. I, we go way back. We were with singular. And then Singular became AT and T, and that's when I got my iPhone, uh, the first my first iPhone. Um, yeah, I switched. I was like nineteen or something. I switched from Verizon AT and T with my friend, just so that's when AT and T was the only iPhone provider. Yeah, yeah. Back then, that was the <laughs> only way you could get it, and that's the reason, dude. W- you can get unlimited data on the iPhone now, again, but for a while there, they kind of like phased out unlimited data. But yeah. Because- People didn't necessarily need it, so right. cell phone companies could charge you a lot for using. That seems extra. to be back though. Um, yeah, it's back with everybody. Yeah, uh, once I, you know, I was, did it, every other cell phone company had it within like three weeks. Yeah, they had kind of. They had always told me I was like, I had had an iPhone for so long. Like I was still one of those original unlimited people from like almost ten years ago. Uh, that's how long I've been with I, the AT and T version of the iPhone, which is crazy, man. I. Uh, and it's so funny, you know, I told you, I chipped my freaking phone screen for the first time a couple of oh, weeks yeah, ago. Oh, yeah, I told you they wouldn't trade that in, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I would probably, I guess I'd have to get that fixed, I guess. I think you're better off just selling it for whatever you can, and because you'll get a lot more to sell it outright than even replace the screen and trade it in. Right, because, I mean, the screen's pretty, the reason why I said, I've never, dude, I've never cracked an iPhone screen, but I've, I've well, like. Well, I mean, you could tell people that that's the case that's cracked, it's not the screen, like the casing or the housing of the phone. Yeah. Um, AT&T would know that's the actual screen part, so, right. yeah, I don't know. Conversation for another time, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Anyways, um, that is not all of the news that came out of the, uh, the Apple event earlier today. We also got the news that there will be a Series 4 for the Apple Watch. 
um, which I think everyone in the know kind of saw coming. Um, it's funny, man, because I don't own an Apple Watch. You do, don't you? Yeah, I haven't had mine on in like months. No, oh, okay. Um, it's on my wrist every day, but I haven't just out of habit. But I don't really use it. I got gotcha. you. I um, you know, I've always wanted one. But that's another thing too, man. Like I, I've, I've like put them on before and like the screen is so tiny and like, I'm just like, I want a bigger one. And now of course, They're a little bit bigger now, but not by much. Yeah. The series four is supposed to be a little bit bigger. Um, I, other than it being kind of larger, I don't know many of the features with the new Apple watch. Um, uh, it's supposed to check your heart rate better, but beyond that, it's just under the hood stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, everything's going to be a little bit faster work a little bit better. Um, yep. all that, all that good stuff. Now, um, I mean, and the thing is, is now that it's a little bit bigger, maybe I'll actually try and get one. I don't know. I've never been much of a watch or like jewelry kind of guy. I'm not, I'm not one of them. Same big, for me, but it, I'm not working on, around them. I bought one and then I was given one. So, Oh, no, it's so funny. My brother and my sister both have one. And I feel like I kind of need one, but I pro- I don't know. I probably won't get one. Um, I'd go with an upgraded phone over an Apple Watch for sure. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe someday. <laughs> Maybe someday, somehow. Um, but no, I mean, I think it's uh, it's just, it's funny. My overall take is just like, this is the first time, and I, and I don't know if it's just age or what, where I'm just like, well, like, I mean, like, I'm just not, I'm not uh, that... You know, eventually I'm going to have to get a new phone because, yeah, you know, course, the, way, yeah. the way Apple does is like eventually with software updates, this phone will be obsolete. But I mean, that'll be in a few years. That's five to six years for an Apple device. Yeah. Right. Um, so eventually I'll have to get a new phone. But I mean, like this phone like works pretty well, man. I, I, and I mean, it does it does everything I kind of want it to do. But then again, but, see, and this is this is my thing. Why I am hesitant on upgrading because, um, and I was the same way when they went from the physical home button to the, uh, like the force track home button or whatever that yeah, is on the, the, the 3d touch. Yeah. 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 Whatever that is. I was very hesitant on, um, on, uh, on that. Um, but eventually I got, I, I've grown to be my, my whole thing is I'm very hesitant to have a, a, a a button that does not have a, a a phone that does not have a home button. I see. I'm fine with it. I think you get. It took me two weeks. It's the longest thing that's ever I've ever had to adjust to with an iPhone for sure because you're yeah. so used to a button. But um, it's I wouldn't go back to a home button now. I gotcha. Um, but no, that's exciting. I mean, yay for everybody getting their new iPhones. I'm sure I'll probably look into getting one. I definitely want to check out that Apple Watch, but I don't know. We'll see. I kind of have other. Uh, financial responsibilities before that happens, but I certainly would like to check one out. Um, and you, you say you're still on the fence about actually getting one or not. I am. I feel like I'll make the decision at like midnight Thursday. Uh, so, is so, it, so tomorrow is that what that? So, so uh, we'll hear Friday morning two a.m. You can start ordering it. Oh, uh, and it is comes that, out is that how it always is? Yeah, yeah. I've never been I've one of those people. Up, I've always woken up at like one forty-five a.m made sure my shipping was right, made sure AT&T's website was fine. Um, and then I order through Apple's app because it goes faster because everything's pre-filled. And then I go right back to bed. So I don't like stay up through the night till that point. I go to bed, I wake up, go back to bed. Gotcha. Well, that's good to know. Uh, very exciting though. Hopefully, every, you know, I think, I think that, you know, I think things are going to work out for Apple, you know, now it's, I know they've had kind of a tumultuous. It'll work out. What do you mean? I think they're I fine. think they're going to be okay. I think they're going to be fine. I'm sure. Yeah, that's like saying Disney's going to be okay. I'm joking. I'm joking, fun. man. I'm joking. They're like what a trillion dollar company now. I'm sure they're going to be just fine. Amazon hit a trillion the this morning, I think. Really? Really? I yeah, first I, company to like hit a trillion in some index, and then they drop back down or whatever. Gotcha. Um, well, with all of those really fun topics out of the way, we of course love to wrap up every edition of the Hero Shop podcast with a little segment we like to call the weekly pull, the weekly pull, the weekly pull, the weekly pull, the weekly pull. I haven't that. sang that in a while, I mean, man. I've kind of yeah. forgotten about the songs. Hey, I think- I'd like to make a weekly poll question real quick, actually. Sorry. Okay. Go right ahead, sir. Uh, next superhero. The floor's, Marvel- the floor's yours. 
next go ahead Mar Eric. marvel game okay would you on. say iron man black panther who should it be iron man black panther captain america or who's the fourth i didn't hear the first part so again. But like uh if like insomniac or someone made another like, oh. spider-man would you uh, for the four choices because i think we can do four Iron Man, Black Panther. I'll say Doctor Strange could be kind of interesting. Dude, I honestly want them all. Like, I want an Avengers game, man. That's happening for sure. From that company? Or is it somebody oh, no. else? Uh, uh, Square Enix Montreal is doing it. Montreal, eh? Yeah. You know what you can get in Montreal? Ste steak seasoning. You can get, um, what is that called? <laughs> uh, the French fries. Poutine. Uh, poutine 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 yeah. delicious anyways so um i don't know man that's a tough one i'm probably gonna say wolverine okay there was a really good wolverine game on the ps3 uh no obviously dude a hulk game would be kind of fun like that did you ever play hulk ultimate destruction no but apparently one of the hulk games from one of those really bad hulk movies is kind of fun yeah, Ultimate Destruction. Oh, is that is that what it is from one of it's the movies? Really fun, yeah. Think of like Grand Theft Auto, but you're the Hulk. Yeah, that would like be you cool. You just go through a city and destroy stuff. Yeah. So we will get that pulled up on the the Hero Shot Twitter, of course at Hero Shot Media. And Eric, thank you for bringing that up. We haven't done the weekly poll in a while. We'll be sure to get I that know, up right? as soon as the show is over. Remind me so I don't forget. I'm all actually right oh, now. I was, I was typing it up right now. Okay, go ahead. That's fine. Weekly poll. Weekly poll. Anyways, as we move on to the weekly pool, this is pretty simple. All it is is just something that we've come across within the past week or so that we would recommend you guys checking out. It could be a video game, uh, Spider-Man PlayStation 4. It could be a movie, a TV show, a book, uh, something we ate, uh, uh, chicken wings with Eric. Um, it, could be, it could be absolutely anything. And I will go on ahead and go first. I watched something kind of interesting last night. Uh, it's a documentary that I had seen on Netflix a handful of times. I had always scrolled past it, but I had heard from someone else that it was actually worth watching. So I decided to check it out, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, there is a documentary on Netflix called, I believe it's called By the Power of Skull," which is a documentary about He-Man. Now, I am a very big fan of the uh <laughs> i'm a big fan but i can't remember the name those those toy documentaries that were on netflix yeah the toys that made us the toys that made us yes i've watched all of those a, a handful of time and um i had heard that this was very similar but very in depth into the uh into the the whole idea of he-man now i'm not a he-man fan I think that was kind of a slightly before my time. The, the movie's called Power of Grayskull, The Definitive History of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Um, but I uh, I think if you were into just sort of pop culture, into, I mean, into anything, toys, collectibles, uh, comics, even cartoons, movies, like this, this documentary has kind of something for you. Um, I found it very interesting being sort of a big movie fan, uh, I have never seen that He-Man movie, that one from the 80s with um, Dolph Lundgren. Have you ever seen oh, it? Oh, yeah, I've never seen it. I've never I seen it I've either. I've never seen anything in He-Man. But a large portion of the, of, the, of the latter half of the movie delves into, or the documentary, delves into the movie from the 80s and kind of all the, the troubled production with that. And, uh, you know, it's, one of, it's kind of one of those cult classic movies these days you know i don't think many people enjoy it but it does have fans uh it made me want to watch the movie but more than anything it's just interesting to sort of dive into how something like that became such a uh like a billion dollar franchise and such a phenomenon but like nowadays like no one really talks about he-man you know what i mean like it kind of yeah. came and went super fast and and it has not stuck around Though, have you heard that rumor? And it's just, I was going to mention this earlier. Have you heard that rumor that, um, oh, what's the guy from, I can, dude, I'm so bad with names. The guy from Transformers, Michael Bay. Have you heard that rumor that Michael Bay is working on a He-Man movie right now? I could see that. I'm sure they have the property. They probably want to do I think that. they do. Like Paramount, I'm pretty sure that Paramount does. And do they've been talking about a movie, um, a He-Man, like, 
kind of a He-Man Masters of the Universe movie live action for a while now, but it seems like, you know, it gets a director and then it loses a director, gets a, there was a piece of concept art that came out several, like a year or two ago of Battle Cat that was really cool and it, that never went anywhere. But if you're interested in just pop culture, He-Man, whatever, I would give um, give this documentary Power of Grayskull, the definitive history of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Uh, I would give it a check. I would give it a try, man. It's on Netflix. Um, kind of long, like two hours long, but I found it kind of enjoyable. I actually kind of learned a few things, and and I learned that Alfred Molina, uh, who played Skeletor <laughs> in the uh, in the movie from the '80s, like it's one of his favorite roles that he's ever taken, and he like he misses be- getting roles like that. Like he he loved. Getting well, yeah. able, being able to play Skeletor, but you're into documentaries lately, huh? You're into documentaries, man. Lately. I've really i've I've been into documentaries for a long time, um, but I rarely talk about them because they they I'll watch a documentary just about anything, and I only bring them up on the show if they if they kind of fit into the narrative of the show. You know what I mean? And something like this obviously is right up right up the. Uh, the you know right up the alley for the, for for this show um but no um michael bay forced to confirm he is not developing the live action he-man movie well there you go from ign so that's about as legit as you can get eric what is your weekly pull for this week good sir spider-man ps4 oh you don't say yeah, yeah, we could have saved all that, that that we talked about earlier. We could have saved that for later if I had known that that's what you were going to pick. <laughs> I kind of thought that's what it was going to be, so I don't know. Um, that yeah, makes sense, go, yeah. Check it out. It's, it's, it's worth it. It's a lot of fun hours. It's Yeah, yeah, it's fun. How long is the full campaign? Do you know? Story-wise, specifically, I don't know. I heard you can like platinum the game, like pretty much 100% it, as far as like doing almost everything you can do um, in like 30 to 35 hours god. so that's good that's, that's so long, long man I, I know but like for me you know the witcher is like the witcher 3 is like a couple hundred hours long um oh yeah anyways um but no that's uh you know it's it that's that's uh that's crazy man uh it, ernie i think finished it in like two days yeah i think that's all he's really doing now <laughs> I think it is like, and now he's probably going back and finishing like all the side quests and stuff. Um, dude, I don't know, man. That's a little bit, that's a little bit extreme for me. I mean, I still have not, uh, dude, I got like a third of the way into uh breath of the wild. And like, I was like, this is too much for me. Like, Oh yeah. I never finished breath. Of the I want to put this down. I think I put 50 I'm hours. Really in breath right of the here. Wild and I never finished the story. Oh yeah. I don't know. Well, sounds like your uh, pups are ready for ready for you to come love on them. So sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let you get to that. I appreciate everyone for hanging out with us tonight for this edition of the Hero Shot Podcast. Eric, thank you so much for appearing via the magic and mystic mystery that is the World Wide Web tonight. Absolutely. Thank you for giving us your insights and just your presence, man. You are a you are a true gift. That's why it's called the present. Wow. Oh, all right. Thanks. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, be sure to follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at Hero Shot Media. If you guys feel like being awesome, be sure to subscribe to the Hero Shot Media YouTube channel. Or if you guys are more into the audio version of the podcast, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, and I think that's it. Spotify, I got to do that soon. I got to get on that soon. Um, be sure to subscribe to us on any of those podcasting platforms and maybe drop a review or a like or whatever you do on those things. I don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just, we appreciate it. Just uh, do it. Eric, thanks so much, man. Uh, anything else before we get out of here? Nope. All right, buddy. Thank you for being awesome, and we will see all of you next week. Goodbye, everyone. Yeah.